2016th, then in the month of October 2021. Wherever you're listening to us from, whatever you may be doing, whoever you may be with, whatever that we interest you to do today is straight talk. On a Denibu 99.1 FM, but remember on this very platform, we speak the truth, we uphold the truth, and we preserve the truth. We call a spade a spade, and we can never call a spade by any other name. There's more reason we say, North Tissera Veritas, North Tissera Ayudisim Veritas, North Tissera Vika Capit Veritas, and North Tissera Lingonum Lingonum, and North Tissera Contra Lingonum Lingonum. You are welcome wherever you are listening to us from. It's always important to remind you that you can also be part of whatever we do here by going through so many online platforms we have we have www.odelibofm.net for you to be part of it that's the website once you log on to website you will see interesting news stories and you click listen live and be part of what we are doing apart from the website you can also download online radio voice on the radio app or if you have any already just search for dinable 99.1 fm and be part of what we are doing here you can also download radio garden or if you have that already, you can only search on Bussy and see what we're doing by clicking live. And you listen to what we're doing. We are live and direct. It's 14 minutes than the hour of 9 a.m. in London and also 30 minutes than the hour of 11 a.m. in Addis Ababa and then 30 minutes than the hour of 4 p.m. in China and 30 minutes than the hour of 11 a.m. in Jerusalem. 30 minutes and the hour of 5 a.m. in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And also 13 minutes than the hour of 10 a.m. in South Africa. And 13 minutes than the hour of 4 a.m. in Washington. And 15 minutes here, or 40 minutes rather here in Nigeria. Down the hour of 9 a.m. in Nigeria. You're welcome. My name is Tony Olisa Mbeke, the Honorable Speaker of the Liberal People's Parliament, the most powerful and robust parliament in sub-Saharan Africa. We'll be looking at the candidacy of Valentine Shinito Osimo. What he has come to do in Anambra State, if given the chance, if given the space, if given the opportunity, if given the podium, if given the atmosphere to administer the affairs of the state, what can he bring about? Who is Valentine Shinito Osimo? What does he stand when we talk about uh, personality analysis who is he joining me to look at his very issues i have enumerated here and all that issues daring and i've also touched to this i have in the studio honorable shima christian who is a member of publicity committee of valentine chileto zibu campaign organization it's my pleasure to welcome you Christian Shima, it's my pleasure to welcome you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the People's Parliament. All right, let's quickly ask you, who is Valentine Kinnitos? He has come here and he has told us who he is. But, you know, for the benefit of insight, you can also tell us who he is. Valentine Chineto Zibo is one of the leading aspirants, a candidate in the Anambra 2021 governorship elections that will hold on the November of the 6th. Right. So Valentine uh, was the former MD CEO, is the former MD CEO of immediate past of Transcorp group of companies, not just their hotel business, but their energy dealings, their investment in agriculture and their investment in other sectors. And he served at that for seven years. Before that, he was a banker. And then he has other things he's doing. For instance, he has his Valentine Ozibo um, charity uh, work that he's doing with Valentine Ozibo Foundation. But um, as of today, his most present job is to be a candidate, to mobilize broad support, to mobilize broad consensus, to find a, a, a way to convince Ndiyanambra to give him the opportunity to serve as the servant leader of this state uh, come 2022, March 17. So that's his major preoccupation now. And so, uh, And in doing that, what you see is that he brings with him all those skills, all those contacts, all those um, 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 resources he has uh, 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 on board. That's why you see that he has campaigned, he has run his campaign uh, as an issue-based campaign. That's why you see that he is seen as someone who is remarkably different from the rest. So that's Valentine Chineto Ozibo. All right, uh, let's really ask you, he is not a politician from the records, from what you just said, he has not ventured into politics. 
He has not uh, learned the job. People will tell you, before you go into politics, you must start somewhere. And most times, people do start as SA, SSA, and then commissioners, and possibly they become uh, advisors to the executive governor, or they come from the party, you know, hierarchy, party structures, and then rise to the top. And from what you just said, he has not done any of this. Why would he just venture into politics and want to be the governor? Well, you might want to ask Donald Trump why he left his business and became the 44th, 45th president of the United States because he doesn't have all those experiences you talked about. But there is an important element of experience you need, which is governance experience, how to manage people, how to manage resources. When you look at his CV, he has managed people at the very topmost level of it. And if you look at his management of experience, um, resources, he has managed experience at uh, um, you know, resources at the very top of it. Bind you that I have said that he served at Transcorp, where you know that Transcorp um, Hotel is the second most secure piece of real estate anywhere in Nigeria, just after uh, uh, Asurok in Abuja. So if someone had dealt business at that level, if someone has sat at the board of Transcorp, if someone has sat at that level and has wrought the kind of transformation he wrote on that institution, that is an experience enough. If what you are asking for is baggage, is EFCC investigations, is allegations of theft and corruption. No, he doesn't have those baggage. What he has is what Indiana Brand needs, which is someone who is forthright, someone who they can trust, someone who they can relate with, someone who knows them, and someone who they know. And that is Valentine Chinetozi. But what he brings on board is his experience in governance, in managing people, in uh, paneling a team uh, that focuses on a problem and solves that problem. So that is Chinetozi, where he has that experience. Uh, and again, when you look at a CV uh, uh, and the kind of plans he has for Anambra State, what you ask, does he have the necessary experience to put through and push through those plans? For instance, when you talk about security plans, he has overseen the second most secure piece of real estate in Nigeria. Because you know that the organization he managed, Transcorp, is where all the diplomats and international, and because they are worried about their safety, Valentine Chineto was able, able to empanel a team, not just from Nigeria, but across board, to secure that piece of real estate. When you talk about whether he is able to manage finances, look at how that uh, um, organization went public and their initial IPO offering. Look at what he was able to do with Transcorp. When you're talking about infrastructure, look at what Transcorp was before and look at what it is now. And look at how they branched out in Lagos and how they branched out, I think, in Port Harcourt. When you're talking about um, um, staff mobility, um, you know, welfare. Look at how they've treated the staff and uh, both the executive, non-executive and the support staff of that organization. Look at how he took care of them for seven years. So if he's coming to tell Anambra workforce, I'm going to take care of you. They have to look at the people he took care of for seven years while he was in Transcorp. So he has those experiences. That's the experience that counts. Well, but I will not discount or discountenance the people who want to rise from SA. So there are several ways to this, Obosi. If you don't want to follow old road, there are, you know, there are several ways to governance. And what you need really is someone who can govern well. My concern is I have uh, listened to you very carefully. And then all you've been telling us about Valentine Chileto is his experience during the time he had with the transcorp, but then we also know that uh, other governors who have been in that very position did not uh, go through the the structures, just like I mentioned. Yes. We have uh, lives of uh, Peter B. B. who just came from business world and uh, then came into government house, and then also the present governor, Olivia, who before now had not done anything. Further. I don't know if uh, he had ventured into in the world politics before becoming the governor. But all the same, we have had such trajectory. So with that in view, people will say that's not a new thing. But my concern is, because you have told us about Valentine Chile Tosi, but just as uh, Oviano, just as P2B, just as Valentine Chile they come from business world and they have so much they promise that they would do in Anambra State. But the issue is not having the political experience. It's the personality involved. One thing is just to do some promises, and another thing is to get those promises implemented or all put them into action. We've seen that in the past in different states. We've also seen that in a number of states. But the question now is, is he somebody we can trust? Trust is of essence here, and trust is something the people would have because if you look at how P2B was voted into power, it was purely on trust. It was not no 
by anybody. He was not known from Adam. So everybody was like, who is this man? But he said, he's going to do this. He's going to fight in security. He jumps. He's going to create this. He's going to do roads. He's going to do this. And people said, let's try him. Because PDP in the state at a point in time fell the state under Mbadinuju. And people thought that there is need to look somewhere else for them to have the dividends of democracy. Now, Vermintide is the candidate of PDP. Each of trust is of essence. Can we trust him? Well, uh, it's easy to say yes, uh, uh, but again, I want it to be a little bit nuanced, right? Anytime you're making a buying decision, you're taking a risk. Whether that decision is on who to marry, of course, you must have done your courtship, but you're taking a risk. Whether that buying decision is on which school to go to, of course, you're taking a risk. Whether that decision is on what course to study, you've done your research and analysis, but you're also taking an informed risk. Whether it is investing in any business, right? That is the same way when you cast your votes. You are taking an informed risk, and that's part of our job this morning, to inform those people who are going to take that risk of voting in this or that into office of the governor for the next four years. So, yes, when you look at their antecedents, as at today, there are three top runners in that office, right? And Valentine Uzibo is proudly, proudly one of them, and he earned it. Right. So when you look at their antecedents, look at what they've done in times past, and that's what gives you the courage to take that decision. For instance, if you, you talked about Governor Obi, he was a political neophyte as at the time he came on board, but he has wealth and wealth of governance and business experiences. Same with this young man, Valentine Ozimbo. Sheyima Kinde, that is easily the best governor in Nigeria today, came from that same background. The political neophyte, but he has tons and tons of. But he had contested before in the past. But of he couldn't course, get that, of but course. He had, had a bit experience when he became a candidate of one of the parties and then couldn't get the plum job. But then the opportunity came and then he became a governor. You see his experience, you see his corporate governance experience because he ran for office once, but you see that all through his adult life he has been doing business both in the corporate world, in the private sector, and all of that. He has that experience. That is the experience Victor B has. That is the experience Sayyid Mokinde has, and that is the experience um, um, Valentine Why not also all saying that was the experience, or that is still the experience Obiano has? Obiano is a different he, man. He, he came from the same background. Obiano is a different man. For instance, I went to school and there are people who went to the same school with me. They, they did turn out the same way I turned out. You went to school and people who went to the same school and even people who were in your class who studied the same course under the same textbooks, under the same lecturers, uh, turned out differently. So, so Ozibo, Ozibo is a different man on his own. Yes, and a number of people have every reason to trust him because right. he has shown, for instance, he came in two years ago and started engaging every in, in, in their number. But again, you will say that engagement was limited to people within the party because you're looking for the primary, the nomination of the party. So in his engagement, there are people who came back as at the time he came back and they've been engaging. And what we find that some of them were short-tempered, some of them were short-fused, despite the fact that they have enormous amount of money. We found that some of them were so huge that ego was bigger than them, that you couldn't approach them, that you can't talk to them. And someone who cannot listen as a governorship aspirant, for instance, there's no no reason to believe that he will listen as a governor. Valentine Uzibo has two ears and one mouth. He listens more than he speaks. Right. He is very down to earth. So you're saying so amongst aspirants, why major stakeholders in PD went, went for him? Went for it's him not because of his words. It's because he can listen to people. He's somebody who can always open his doors and then allow ideas to flow into him. He's not somebody who is egoistic or somebody who has this uh, pride. No matter what school you went to, no matter what grades you came out from, no matter what what first class or PhD you have, governance is about mobilizing public consensus, right? You might go to Harvard and know all those things, but someone who lives in this obosi knows what his problems are. If you say he didn't go to school, that you won't listen to him, then you can't effectively govern that person, right? So Valentine has that ears to listen, and he has that mind. Once you're able to convince him with sound argument, he listens, he considers pros and cons before he engages. Oh, so yeah. we want a governor who who listens. We want a governor who people can approach. And this is what those of us in PDP saw, and the leaders of the PDP saw in those del that delegate election that produced Valentine Chine Tozibo. And that is what we are inviting the Anambra to see in this man, to give him the opportunity to make this state chawapo. Okay. Because uh, the slogan is Anambra Chawapo. That's correct. So Anambra Chawapo before, now to Chawapo You know, that's just what it means because that's Ibo. We are the light of the nation, okay. but that light seems not to be shining but so brightly. But the question now is, yeah, there was a time one of the candidates stood up that uh, if he's not broken, why mend it? And then possibly is Valentine coming to consolidate on the works done by Obiano 
or is he coming to do something different or he believes that the state is totally broken that it needs to be fixed from from scratch or possibly to you will start somewhere what do you think he may be thinking well we have already discussed this both uh, in in his manifesto and in his every for for instance in one of his uh, uh, this thing he talked about the anambra airport which is ongoing now and he said he will fully operationalize that airport i'm using that point as a point to tell you that what valentine is coming to do is that he's not going to abandon projects simply because they were um, come commenced by the previous administration. We will look at all those uh, uh, projects, the viable projects, and continue with that, regardless of who gets the credits. What India Nambra wants is to get the job done, not who started or who finished. Because if you're going through a road and it is bad, nobody's going to remember that it was the previous governor that started it. All India Nambra wants is to go on motorable routes. Mm -hmm. If you're India Nambra, so if there are areas of interest where the next, previous government, and they are doing some work now, and they will stop at some point in March next year, the next governor, which is in, by God's is going to be Valentine as well. If the Anambra give him the mandate, will continue from where um, the incumbent governor will stop, right? And then he will also bring with him, along with his Kanambra Chawa Pozibu Manifesto, because there are projects Obi are not commenced that we will also find ways to finish the completion. But we have our uh, unique prog programs and projects that we are coming to execute, and that is what he laid out articulately and expertly in his Kanambra Chawa Pozibu Manifesto. Now, if you ask, what do you think? are uh, the immediate concerns of the people and residents of this jury state because most times the elite seems to be disconnected from the people what they may be thinking for the people might be different from what the people are thinking for themselves so the way things are because you said he's a grassroots person and then he has this uh, synergy with the people he's always around with the people he feels the pulse but the question now is can he estimate can he extrapolate the immediate concerns of the people if he is given the chance, the opportunity? Because it's one thing for you to go there, like Peter be started, he came in and started saving money. People were worried. Look at this person we voted into power. We want him to start doing something. But he was more like done for almost six months. People were asking what was, and people nearly started crucifying him until he turned around the whole thing. But then, before then, people had expressed their vituperations and they were not happy with him. But later on, he made up for all that. Would Valentine start that way by coming in to save money first before going into work? Or is he going to address the immediate concerns of the people? And what are these immediate concerns of the people? If you asked this the question three years ago, the immediate concerns of the people would have been public infrastructure that is broken. Going from point A to point B in Anambra State now, routes that should have taken 10 minutes now take an upwards of an hour, right? So if you ask this question three years ago, it would have been public infrastructure, and that was the, the chief thing. But today, the last, the, 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 there is a change, right? And then security, understandably, is now the topmost concern of every day in Anambra. And then in discussing this security, what you have to look at is his Kanambra Chawapo Manifesto. He has identified that there are two causes of the insecurity we have in Anambra State. First is that insecurity arises from economic realities. You see what the inflation rate is, you see what the high un unemployment rate is, you see the exchange rates, you see the excruciating economic conditions the Anambra have been forced to live with. And those are the things that push people to, 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 to criminality. And then the second and the most important contributor to current insecurity in Anambra state it is e uh, political realities, right? Because there is a feeling of marginalization down here. And then there is a feeling that Nigeria's unity has been mismanaged. And that is the biggest contributor to insecurity in Nigeria. And Ozibo has addressed that some of those insecurity will be addressed by providing jobs, but there are ones jobs cannot take out. And those are ones you address by public consensus, by building consensus around issues. So when you deal with the economic contributor of insecurity and you deal with the political contributor of insecurity, by the way, why are people reacting the way they are reacting? Because they don't have credible leadership. People feel that the leaders they elected, both they elected, both they appointed, but the political elites are so distant from the people, and that's why they are reacting violently. If they find a credible leader, they can feel that he is interested in their welfare. Who we go to Abuja and respectfully, but very poignantly, communicate the needs and the feelings of Southeasterners to our federal partners. When you have such a leader, if he says, listen, people will listen. If he says, stop this, people will stop this. People will give him that chance to negotiate because the peace we want is the peace that will be negotiated.
And this man is the most suited. By the way, he has this kind of emotional intelligence you can't find in any other candidate running for this election. Oh, yeah. He knows how to get work done. He knows how to convince people to do this. And he has that credibility. What you need is a credible person who will talk and people will listen. No, people Ozibu are, is that no, person. No, no, people are of the feeling that he is Peter B's boy. Uh, for the fact that Peter B is behind the uh, his campaigns, uh, he would always refer him as the Godfather. And when people are saying that each of Godfatherism has been destroyed, buried in the state, giving him the space. And then the thought of some people, not everyone anyway, there are some people who think so, that he's bit of his boy. He is Senator Uche Winifred's boy. That if he becomes the governor, it becomes that for you to get Certain things done. Go through P2B. Go through Senator Uche Kunife. That's how things will be done. That he will always listen to these people and then hold them at a very high extent. That he might not really be a man of his own in some extent. These are fears expressed by some people. How do you react to these fears if actually it's anything to go right? Well, I've seen Valentine Ozibo. I've discussed with Valentine Ozibo and I've watched him carefully, both from within and from outside. What I do know about that man is that he is his own man. While he looks genteel, he has a very strong moral anchor, right? Regardless of what recommendations you make to him, if it is in conflict with his moral anchor, he's not going to implement it, right? So he's his own man, right? But again, what you find is that P2B is a leader in the South, is not just an Anambra PDP. And by the constitution of the party, the immediate past general elections, he was the vice presidential uh, candidate for our party. So that confers on him some form of legitimacy. But on the election day, he will have just one vote, like you, Tony Sambeki, will have one vote, and Michi Christian will have one vote. So we are, we are comforted that that one vote for P2B is assured for the PDP. And I'm now in your studio hoping to convince you at the end of the day that your vote will be for P2B. So I'm happy that P2B will vote Valentine Ozil. I'm happy that Ekunifo will vote Valentine Ozibo. I am happy that Chima Christian will vote Valentine Ozibo. I am happy that you may, at the end of the day, decide to vote Valentine Ozibo. So we are happy at all the support we are receiving, but to equate them to be godfathers is, um, is not the, the, the reality on ground. Because, uh, you know, some of these people, they have overbearing characteristics. You have seen in the park, they would like to take to whoever that is there, let's get this thing done. And if you do not get that done, they will remind you of the contributions they made in your campaigns and how they supported you or how they are being with you. So, because we noticed that that was the area of disagreement between the present governor and the evening past governor when he thought that he could not dictate some things and then people felt that uh, he can be here and be here. And before you know it, he left the party and since then, things have not uh, really been good between him and the incumbent governor. What do you make out of this? Well, I don't know what is the problem between the incumbent governor and the former governor, Peter. But you seem to know more than I do about that. So I will defer to you on that matter. But what I do know is that um, as a governor of the state, if Ozibo gets the, uh, the chance and the opportunity that we are begging the Anambra to give us to become the governor of Anambra State, I've told you that what he's going to implement is, is a Anambra Chawapo Manifesto. But if there are recommendations that are good for the people of Anambra State, if there are recommendations, whether they came from Obete, whether they came from our nature main market, whether they are coming from Kwanewi, or whether they are coming from anywhere, he will look at it carefully. And if he finds that those recommendations are to the benefit of Indian Ambra, believe me, he will implement them. Uh, right? But when those recommendations go afoul of his manifesto, go afoul of the collective interest Don't mind of him Indian Ambra. Having a fallout with the person? When you're talking about a fallout, the primary job of the governor is to govern the whole state. If he's own stance is in conflict with the stand of whoever that have supported you. What do you think he will do? For instance, I am supporting him. And for instance, I am hoping that you will support him. At the end of the day, there is going to no, be... No, don't bring me into the picture. Just you might no, at the no, end no, of the day, but of course you have, no, no, you no, have no. a vote. It's not a case of having a vote, because sometimes we are very neutral in these jobs. Of course, we, I know you're neutral. And most times, we don't get involved in the picture. No, you don't, but that, you cast your votes no, silently. I, I may not cast the votes. I may okay. monitor things, because our own is to monitor the election and give reports and all that. You can't be monitoring election at the same time you're casting votes. You can't be doing the two jobs at the same time. I'll give so it to you. The money, most important thing is the fact that I'm saying that if he, has, if he has a conflict with some of his big supporters, not you, big supporters in the person of Peter B and the person of Senator Uche Kunife, when there is this conflict, do you think he would prefer to do what his moral thought projects him to do just and possibly risk 
having a follow-up to these people, or he will do what these people want and possibly relinquish his moral thoughts at the background. What do you think he will do I've if he told, finds himself in such things? I've told you where this man is coming from. For instance, when you look at the board of directors of Transco PLC, right. what you see that you have broad range of people right. ranging from generals to that, to this, to that, to mm. former this, to former mm. that. And they all don't agree on any particular issue. Mm. But what you see in Valentine Ozibu is that boardroom skills to discuss, frankly, with people from any background on issues, that boardroom uh, experience to, to discuss through difficulty. For instance, there are people who don't dis discuss when they disagree. Not vow. Mm. If I have disagreements with you, we sit and trash out the disagreement and at the end of the day we come out with something. But there are people who end agreements with banging on the table, oh, not yeah. Valentine or oh, So whatever problem that might come out, and again, I know that your question is a hypothetical situation. Mm. I don't respond to that, but because you, it is maybe on the minds of your listeners, it's good that we talk about that. Mm. If there is any problem, I trust that Val has that emotional intelligence, boardroom experience to sit down with anyone, whether they are from Obete or from anywhere, to discuss issues and discuss uh, 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 issues. Let's exactly. talk about the manifesto. What are there in that manifesto that we've not seen before? Can we look at some of the things he has promised that he's going to do if he's given this space in the manifestos? What are there in his manifesto? We are not coming to bring heaven on earth. Okay. Governance is about every day in the Anambra and he's, in his manifesto he has listed and itemized. I've talked about his security plan. Did I think Thing you need to know about is his infrastructure plan, right? Because when you look around Anambra State, I've mentioned that before, that Anambra seems to have a broken infrastructure. Go, uh, moving from point A to point B now in Anambra State is uh, a, a hell of a job, right? Whether you talk about the federal routes, whether you talk about the state government routes, whether you talk about the local government routes, they are all in a bad shape. So Valentine Ozibu is coming to do public infrastructure. And when you look at public infra uh, his uh, public infrastructure plan, what I find interesting in, in it is his funding plan. Because when you look at the fiscal realities now, the dwindling oil revenue, mm -hmm. the dwindling federal allocation, and then because of insecurity, it could also inf impact on IGR because if people no longer do business as they should, then the state should not expect to tax them as they should. So you're looking at dual window of opportunity available to the governor being impacted. So that's why his infrastructure funding plan is doing on public-private partnership. And it's worse. So what it means that if the public are not ready to partner with him, if the private sector are not ready to partner with him, the infrastructure plan will be stalled. There is no way they can. We, we, we've seen that, and as far as Second Niger Bridge is concerned, because the way Jonathan conceived Second Niger Bridge was PPP, you know, public and private partnership. But that's how he conceived it. But then. MOUs were signed, and then understandings were reached, agreements were reached, but at the same time, we saw that some people could not meet up with the counterpart funding, and it became an issue, and they stalled the project. But President Mohamed Bukhari came and then decided to execute the project with government funds. Because sometimes some of these PPPs tend to work as expected. So in a situation where the funding pattern, as you expressed in that very manifesto, fails to work, can there be an alternative? Let me tell you this. Peter B's administration is rightly a major reference point in governance, mm. anywhere governance is mentioned in Nigeria. A lot of the funds he works with did not come from the state government. It did not come from the federal government. If you are seen as an accountable person, if you are seen as a straightforward person, people will be more than willing to do business with you. By the way, not just public-private pa partnership. We have opportunities for donor funding. We have opportunities for international donor agencies. Could so are you, you hoping for that, for things to get done in the states? Of course, we know how to attract these funds. There are funds. If for instance, Anambra not... State in the past four years, look at our Ubek uh, 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 funds. Have we been able to pay our counter for? I think we have about 4.6 billion in that account unaccessed. These are monies that should go to primary and secondary schools. And my concern is, is every if we do what we are supposed to do, the partners will do what they are supposed to do. But when you have a visionless government, when you have a directionless government, when you have a government that is not focused, when you have a government that doesn't know how to do the job, then that is where the partners flee. Remember in Anambra State, at some point in Anambra State, Anambra became the top most state in terms of assessing donor funds. What happens? Ecological funds. For instance, um, erosion is ravaging all parts of Anambra State, and there are ecology funds that are available for you to tap in, but you must meet their requirements. If government on their part meet their requirements, those funds are already there to all come right. down to Anambra right. State. So, so Valentine Ozibu is most prepared to do the due diligence that is required to bring in donor funding and to mobilize a broad consensus among the 
public and private sector, by the way, where he's coming from to do the job that is required to be done in Anambra State. Uh -huh. Government alone, if anybody comes to your studio uh -huh. and promises you that he's going to build roads from point A to point B, all with government money, tell him he's lying because but, but, there is no government money. You <laughs> must bring in government money and you must mobilize resources from elsewhere. Okay. And that's why Val is different because he's thinking outside the box and his plans are realistic, not plans that are... Because you see, I discussed with one of the aspirants, thankfully he did not secure nomination of all his party. And he was promising, the key item he was promising, if I leave it out, you might know the person I'm talking about. And I said, how do you intend to fund this? Because from my own estimation, this is going to cost you between 45 to 47 billion. And you're saying you will do it in the first six months of your administration. How will you raise 46 million billion in your first six months? Do you even know what the IGR window of Anambra State is? And he began to say, oh, he will do this. And what you see is that the funding plan is not there. And no matter what plans you have, if you don't have the funding, it will be impaired. So if okay. anybody comes to your studio and promises you that he's going to do all drills in Anambra State with Anambra money, no, there is no money like that. So that's why you have to bring in your own, then get the requirements needed to bring in foreign money. My concern is we've seen somebody who have uh, done so much with Anambra money and told us that uh, when you wipe away corruption and then wastages, things will get done. And then that is the person of... Interestingly, uh, that's Dr. also included in his manifesto. Dr. Chris Robertsengige, you know, some of the projects he, he did under two years and about 10 months, close to three years. Some of the projects he did, he purely did it with the state funds. And then he also said that he did it even under intense pressure because the atmosphere was not even right for him because of the distractions he had. But as aside, just like you did say about issue of funding is very important because if you can tell us you can do this without doing this, without funding plan. And many people will tell you they have the international presence and they have the contacts, they have uh, this, they have that, and they, they can bring in this investor, they can bring in that investor. Let me tell you something. The states has had more than a hundred MOUs and these uh, agreements and uh, we are some of the things that uh, different so sexy governments have had with uh, expatriates and those in diaspora and some of these things have not been fulfilled either one reason or the other but just like I must admit it point to made that there are some funds that are out there it's all about meeting certain requirements like uh, COVID-19 funding and order. There are some states that if you don't meet up certain criteria, definitely you will not access the fund. But we know very well most times these funds are not enough. That's no reason why you have to open up yourself and then be clean when it comes to governance. And there is, at any point there is an assessment, you will come up with a clean bill so that they can easily have the trust of those who may want to do business with the state. But that's where you're coming from. But interestingly, is the candidates of PDP aware of the high politics the state he is about to administer his governance. Is he aware of the high politics? Has he come across with the, 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 the depth profile, the depth structure, the depth window of the state? Because one thing you may even get into governance, the first thing that we start after will be certain liabilities. How will you meander? How will you wriggle out of these things that could be a clog in the wheel of what we have intended to do for the state. That's why I told you that this man is well prepared for the job. Because all the publicly available information as regarding Anambra State as of today, he has them. For instance, we know it because in his health plan, he has identified that he will do work with, for instance, primary health care centers. There are 629 of those in Anambra State, both primary health care centers, primary health care posts, and the health clinics in Anambra State. There are 629 of them, and he's saying that he's going to revamp them. And there is a plan, for instance, I will that okay. if you come for instance in the Dembele where we are today you can mobilize the Dembele people to fix primary health care centers in the Dembele right I can call names here in the Dembele who we can tell that please these some of them don't even need more than six million fix you can get private individuals to do this for government recognition right and there is these groups of Anambra people in Lagos in diaspora and everywhere I'll give you another glowing example go to Obu today there is a health center they have there it was built by Obu Progressives Union so when you have town unions who are viable and there is a governor that is willing to work for them to set a template as at today there is what they call adopt a school program going on in Anambra state it was a very aspect articulated program but it's being messed up 
So if you find that governance, people at the governance end of it, giving end of governance, mm. is, are, are very adept at what they do, you see that there are a lot of a number of mm. people willing to partner. For instance, go to our healthcare plan again, which is talking about enrolling people uh, in Anambra State Health Insurance Agency. Every time our big men come back here, or even when they don't come back, their villagers have their phone numbers. They are calling you this, oh, my son is in the hospital, my son is in that hospital. They keep sending money for hospital bills. Mm. Now the government can convince them to enroll their villagers just in what we call Anambra Health Scheme. But it's already going on here. It is now. going on. I can give you the numbers. The numbers, just 43% of that is what is coming from the private sector and from the unorganized private sector. A huge number of that is coming from the civil service. And civil service pool alone is limited that it cannot cover a lot. So what we are doing now is to deliberately push through to see that there are more enrollees into the program. Because if you have more enrollees paying their premiums, then you have a bigger pool of money to deal with issues when they come up. So you see that these plans are fundable his plans are down to earth and his plans are things you can... Governance is not rocket science and it shouldn't be. All right, All right. Uh, I got that, but then people will also think that uh, his government will be more like uh, situated around the people and then people government partnership. Remember, the present administration started something like choose their project, taking this money to the people for them to take time and decide what they want in their community. But you are saying that the kind of government the way it's looking at is a one that would, you know, kind of uh, have this understanding or liaise with what to do individuals in some towns because there is no town in Anambra State that has no billionaire. There is no town. It is even in there this... There is no town yes. in Anambra State that has no billionaire. It has been established no matter how now how small that town is because the state, a number of states, has the highest number of billionaires in Nigeria. So you are saying that time and time is going to tap into that system, leverage on it, you know, to bring impact that's, on it. That's, is that system, what you are thinking? That system sends you more money. In Anambra State, the money that comes into Anambra State on the account of our billionaires is more money than the government makes. That's what people don't know. So when you leverage on that, for instance, Anam Nigeria sells crude oil, right, to make our forex. Mm. But you know that there are foreign exchange remittances from our people in the diaspora. Yeah. You see that pool of fund. That is what we're looking at. Because you see that every now and then they do intervention. They share rice, they share beans, they share this, they share that, they pay school fees. We can invest and then we can you know, we can convince them to adopt schools. Mm. We can convince them to enroll their people in our healthcare system. We can convince them. There are a whole lot of things you can the do last time if you partner here. with People. The candidate of PDP was here asking how is it going to harmonize the tax system in the state because the way it is currently going on, it is quite uh, chaotic, it is quite something very, very disturbing because it stops public fees, it stops any sense of civility, and it's something that many people have uh, been enchanted and found the got disenchanted with. Now the question is because he's even a leverage on technology because they find towns everywhere collecting taxes and then they find out in some markets we have about 65 major markets and more than 200 rural markets. But then the issue of transaction has always been an issue. Some of these market people will tell you how much they pay to government monthly. They will, some of them will tell you they pay 12000 to government monthly, 15000 to government monthly. And sometimes they pay other funds, sanitation, environment, and all that. And then you get into the system. The system in currently experience is something that has no harmonization, has no sense of dignity and sense of decorum. I ask him this question. He gave me his response. Well, I want to know what you think about this. No, what the candidate thinks is more important than what I think. What I'm holding here is Kanambra Chawapo Manifesto. Oh, okay. This manifesto is as a result of interactions with Ndiyanambra. He sat down with Ndiyanambra. What do you want from your next governor? And there is no how you will sit with the business community in Anambra State and they will not tell you about taxation. In fact, taxation is more in the first for business community in Anambra State. They don't want thoughts to harass them. They don't want multiple taxation. They don't want excessive ta taxation. And those are the things we have applied. They look at page 25 of our mani Anambra Chalk Manifesto. He says boldly that we will overhaul, automate, and increase transparency of registering process of registering businesses, obtaining permits, and then paying taxes 
through our open governance platform. There's another place he says Is that this payment going to be digital or this manual collection? No. Where are we? You cannot continue in this 21st century to harass businesses without and conjures. You can't. So how you do can't. you enforce payment of transaction? There are people that will not, people that will not like, want to pay. Are you going to use the unions? Because even if you use the unions, the unions will be on the road to enforce certain things. Are you going to use uh, kind of a digital system whereby people will find means of evading it? There will be a way of enforcing payment of transaction. The present government believes that you must situate some towns who are recognized. There are some that do not have this government recognition, but there are some that they, ha they have the permit, they have the contract to get the transactions to the government, which also pile up the IGR of this state because they believe that the IGR must increase for government to do some development to projects. Now the question is, how would Valentine or Cibo enforce taxes, especially where people do not want to pay? Uh, focus and the sole focus, sometimes we find that people in government are lazy. Okay. For instance, look at Lagos IGR. You know that Lagos is benefiting more than the rest of Nigeria in exactly. IGR. For instance, the betting economy, the I won't call names, but the online gambling economy is a 25 billion naira economy, right? And then the betting we do these days, people now do it on their mobile phones. The state government does not have the res resources to track all online transactions that emanate from Anambra. But you know that there is a certain tax that is agreeable to Anambra state on the account of people who are, for instance, doing online betting in Anambra. The state is not collecting that because we don't have the infrastructure. But you can bring in young people, sit them down in a room, and they will devise you means where you can track these transactions. Most of those companies are headquartered in Lagos, but we can still remit their taxes here in Anambra State because there is a sizable number of Anambra population that buy things from them. There are several online platforms you can track. There are several banking platforms you can track. Not, it yeah. mustn't be. It mustn't be. I have not addressed my question. But, but again, <laughs> we, are, we are talking about, yes. If you I will buy address... a load here, at, if you buy some goods at building, from building, probably before you get to Busi, you must have paid at different points, from one point to the other, from one point to the other. The first question, is it something that is going to continue on that Valentine no. Ozibo? Let's say no. And then how would Valentine Ozibo repackage such transaction of where you load some goods on a moving vehicle and taxes are collected? How would you repackage it? Or is it going to leave that to, to be and possibly devise other means of collecting transaction, not necessarily the one you load on a moving vehicle and taxes are collected while the vehicles move at different checkpoints by these towns. What you see is, and um, what we are proposing is tax harmonization, right? Okay. Because what you see that there are some goods that are taxed by the federal government, same tax uh, taxed by the state government, and state, same tax taxed by the local government authorities. Mm. So what you're going to have is that Valentine is going to call the local government authorities and let's sit down and harmonize our tax drive. So that you don't have people harassing people for the local government, and you have people harassing people for the town union, and you have people harassing people for the state government. What we want to have is joint harmonization, joint effort. So no contract that will be given to some individuals that will be taking on this. No contracts to some individuals. If he comes in, he will look at what we have on board, because regardless of the amount of information you have outside, there are things you are yet to learn when you are inside. When you come inside, you will look at the competence and the capacity of the state government, that is the federal, the state institution, mm -hmm to dress the if do you find that they are not competent enough you try to scale them up to be able to collect the taxes of all number of people but if you find that you can do private individual partnerships with companies who can not thousands not people who will send cultures away but these things will be structured when you have a government that wants I, I to do the work we have one advice you're going to take to him on how to repackage these things i have one because if you make the bus stops functional that you cannot pick passenger except at designated bus stops. You must make use of packs. These taxes can easily be collected at the bus stop area and possibly the packs without literally seeing anybody on the road. Because if the bus stops are digitally connected and then whereby it, there is a tally where if you make such payments straight to government accounts, don't give to individual and the packs working and then where there is this orientation and sensitization that it becomes an offense for any commuter, or not just commuter, any keke rider, anybody at all, to pick passenger on you. You don't do it. There are, because you are trying to make 
some or take the state to another level of decency whereby government can still leverage on that and then have some point of tax collection at these bus stops and at these parks without necessarily disturbing people on the road. But we don't have this. If we have bus stops that are not working, we have parks. And that will also help in the congestion traffic because some of these vehicles are low. They load on the road. And once they load on the road, they narrow the road. The, that is already narrow. You know, most importantly, if we make use of our parks, you can, the government can make so much money from parks, but there are many revenue that government can generate up from parks. It's my sincere advice. I don't know how that will be taken. What, what I can assure you on that is that this manifesto I've mentioned to you before was gotten by broad consensus of the Anambra. And it's a living document that can be worked on. Right. We will incorporate your ideas, we will discuss them, debate them, and if the government find merit in it. Yes, there are a lot of ideas. But remember, the advice is not for PDP loan, for any government at all, so that people don't accuse me of trying to sell something to PDP. It's not for PDP loan, it's for every party. Now, before we open the phone lines, because definitely you have identified infrastructure as one of the key things that the government needs to address. Because Security say, and infrastructure. Security and infrastructure say that many roads have been broken. In fact, many roads are totally, totally broken That Once it gets to power, they will look at those that can easily be fixed and those that can be reconstructed will be taken into account. But do you think that that should be a concern? Roads in the state, road infrastructure, you mentioned something about health, but I also want to know his plans in area of education. I also want to know his plans in area of civil service. You know, they have civil service, many of them have been on a great level, their promotion, their pension, and all that. And then having this view that the state is one of the states that do not pay the civil servants, and many of them, they will tell you they have been passing through a lot for them to make some next week. But remember, they are not old. That's one thing the present government can always tell you. They are not owing anybody for anything. An issue of pension, the gratuity, and all that, that's for the civil service sector, the, the, the manufacturing sector, the intro of industrialization, agricultural sector, there are plans for this, and I think you have those things in manifesto. We have those things. I implore everyone in Anambra to look at this Anambra Tawabu manifesto. When you look at, for instance, you talk about education, apart from our plans on conventional education, which is your 6334 system mm -hmm. of education, we're going to do, for instance, a comp free uh, quality and compulsory education for basic uh, primary education, primaries 1, 2, GSS 3, free for all public secondary schools mm -hmm. and primary secondary schools. But apart from that, there's another track that Valentine Rezibo is interestingly looking at. And that is where, because we know that regardless of the aptitude, regardless of the opportunities you have, not everybody will want to go to university, both in terms of opportunity, both in terms of aptitude. So we're talking about vocational education, whereby you can have a vocational institute that can train, for instance, electricians. And then in six months, in three to six months, you have people who are certified electricians. Mm -hmm. We're looking at vocational education. We're looking at bead making. We're looking at all of those things that can turn out people can go to a school and in six months you have a scheme that can pay you all right i think yeah, the last time i spoke with him on that he was actually saying that there should be if you look at me should have a mechanic village a very big village mechanic village that would have many technicians artisans working in that and it should be something government will support that every local government should have a big mechanic village with certifications programs going on so that you cannot be do you know saying that the conventional ones they will still exist but then the one the government will ensure that people can always have value for them but that's just that he said a quite a number of things time would not permit us to go into so many other areas that i mentioned in earlier on agricultural sector manufacturing sector and many other sectors even the issue of uh, uh industries as Things that people would also want to know his plans, but time will not permit us. Let's invoke the most powerful and robust parliament and have your thoughts. We'll be speaking with Shima Christian, who is a member of Publicity Committee of Valentine Chineto Zibo Campaign Organization. The candidate of the People's Democratic Party has come here to solicit your votes. And then my job is to ask questions. And then his own is to convince the people. He, he, I'm not the one that is going to be convinced, but the people will be convinced. We started earnestly. We have asked questions. If you have uh, other questions to ask, you can do them. 0906 1414478. You can also call 0703 Remember, we do not lie here. 
We speak the truth and we uphold the truth and we preserve the truth. My name is Tony. Oh, listen, let's quickly go straight to the phone line. Good morning. You are welcome. It's good to have you. You're welcome. Uche Okafo calling from Mugwana. Can you up your voice a bit? All right, if I get that correct, I think it's just your own understanding. Said, yeah, from your own understanding. What is he going to do about our own government? Remember, it's part of security stream address, but we're going to come back to that later on. Good morning, you're welcome. It's good to have you. Hello. Good morning, you're welcome. Good morning. You're welcome, Henry. All right, we got a question. Uh, we have to leave it at that point here. Taking note of that question, and then he's going to react to that later on. Good morning, your welcome. It's good to have you. Uh, please, can you go on? Yeah, go on. Yeah, go on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. He has come here. He has come twice. He has come twice. Probably you are not opportune to hear from him the time he came. He has come twice. I cannot show you that. Thank you so much. Let's take this one before I go to Shima. Good morning. You're welcome. 
You're welcome. <laughs> All right, we're going to cheat. My Christian is the person on the seat this morning, not Valentine as well, but he's here to represent him. Go on, we are listening. Well, we, uh, we, we, we lost the other record, probably something happened, network, or probably any other thing. Good morning, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome, Mara Ketchuka. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Uh, do we just take one more before we come back to you? Good morning, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You don't think that the DP is fair to give the vote that you deserve our support anymore? Please, I'd like to, to, to answer this question. All right, uh, you want him to answer this question. Let me come back to Shima Christian, who is our guest this very morning, a member of Media Publicity. Valentine, as you welcome to the you have listened to some of the questions. Are you taking care of some of them? Noted them. Let's quickly have your reaction to some of these questions. Richie from Mkwele um, was concerned about unknown gunmen. And I did articulate uh, earlier on, say earlier on, that um, we have articulated two broad contributors to the insecurity, the political contributor and then the economic contributor. And then we have laid out plans to address both, both the political and both the um, if, um, economic contributor to the insecurity we have in Anambra State. Henry was discussing um, Godfatherism, made references to Peter's support of... Um, well, what is distinguishable now is that Peter's support of Governor Obiano and what we have now is quite distinct. Peter introduced Obiano to Ndianambra, I agree with that. Today, P2B is not the one introducing Ozibo to Ndianambra. Ozibo is his own man. He just happens that Peter is 
part of his supporters, right? So Wazibu came and ran a good campaign and convinced the PDP to give him the ticket. As a party man, it is incumbent on him, just like I am supporting the candidate of our party. And there are other stakeholders, including Chuchu Onyema, including um, Oselo Kobaze, who was our candidate, including Lady Chidi Onyema Lukwe, include, there, are, there are lots of supporters we have that are supporting this project. So it is not right to say that one man is introducing him. But if you're talking about godfatherism, assuming, assuming that we want to agree that P2B is going to be a godfather, which he is not, and that is not his ambition, right? You ask who is the godfather of Anduba? Who is the one sponsoring his candidacy? Who are the people contributing the money we see them spending? Who is the godfather of the other side of the campaign on Abga? And then when you place these possible godfathers on the table, who is the better godfather? So I'll leave it at that to answer um, Ndubisi, who is worried about thoughts and insecurity. So I've overflogged the issue of insecurity. But again, it's important that it's coming up from you to show that we are right about um, placing insecurity ahead of infrastructure on the plans or the needs of India number. So yeah, yes, uh, we've atomized how we intend to tackle insecurity about thousands yes we don't want thousands to keep harassing india Nambra. so we'll find jobs for those thousands some of them need to be rehabilitated because you can't just take them off if you take them off completely without any alternative then they right. turn into armed robbers so we're going to rehabilitate some of them and then you find that we are going to implement a harmonized tax system thousands harassing india Nambra should be a thing of the past then um Iken from ihembos is worried about ozubulu ihembos it was awarded by Peter. we did say here they were going to look at ongoing projects and abandoned projects. Some of the abandoned, in fact, some of the projects awarded by Governor Peter B were abandoned. There are some projects awarded by the previous governor but that we are not com are not completed to date. There are some. So you are going to look at the whole spectrum of projects that anywhere any one naira of Anambra money has been invested to commence a project. And if we find that we can put in two more naira to complete it, so that India Anambra would derive maximum value for their investment, we will do that. So we're going to look at critically all the state infrastructure right. and see the ones we can fund. Right. And before, talk, before, someone talks about why we are not campaigning before, in Anambra. Before you go on to the next take message uh, from uh, PDP campaign of this, when we come back here, continue with the response you have. We'll be right back after this very message. I'm <laughs> All right, uh, that's the message from PDP campaign organization. But then we're actually on something before the message, so you can continue now. Yes, someone asked why we're not campaigning in Anambra State. It will be insensitive for us to look at all that is happening in Anambra State and keep campaigning, right? We discussed this at the management meeting that I was privileged to sit in. Our candidate is worried about the safety and security of every union Anambra. When you call for a campaign, for instance, that we are coming to say in any local government, and there is a possibility that we expose people to attacks from unknown government, right? We're not worried about a candidate because the candidate is protected, but we're worried about people who might come to the campaign and then on their way home they might be attacked. We saw what happened in Ihiala. Those people that lost their lives and they were injured and were scared about what happened, and some are still traumatized to date. Those things could have been avoided if they had the emotional intelligence to avoid something like this. You can't bring people out and expose them to danger. Yes, we want to win the nomination 
the elections, but we will not sacrifice the number of lives to win elections. So we are very sensitive about these times we are in. We don't want to expose people unduly to harm by calling them for rallies and for campaigns. So, but rest assured that our people are on ground doing house to house campaign, calling people on the phone, doing all that we can, and the candidate is engaging their number everywhere they might be, both in Asaba, in Lagos, in Anambra, but to see open air rallies, uh, except if things improve. So just know that our concern is about the safety of everybody who attends that rally. And because we can't guarantee the safety of everyone, then it's of no need putting, even if it's a single life at risk. Our candidate is very sensitive to this. He will not dismiss Anambra lives as just 15 lives because the governor was asked on the national television and he said it's just 15 lives so people died and he's saying it's just 15 those 15 people are 15 people who went to school are 15 fathers are 15 mothers are children of people so there are lives that is cut short we can't expose anyone to that harm and then someone asks why should we trust pdp yes that question uh, uh look at the dynamics there are only two parties that will contest the 2023 elections they are the pdp and the apc are you are you talking about 2023 election? Are you talking about presidential election? Because 2023 is general election. Oh, there yes, I am talking about 23, 2023 presidential, presidential. election. Oh, I yes, there are many parties that will contest. There are about 18 registered political parties, but the reality is on ground being so um, so pragmatic. Many political parties can also come about before then. Yes, but we are looking at the major two, right? We are right. looking at the PDP and the APC. So you just ask which is the safest best for Ndebo. That question, and then if we give Ndebo Anambra PDP, then we can make a strong claim to presidency. By the way, it is of no, it's of importance that you note that the PDP zoned its chairmanship to the north. With that not producing chairmanship, it is agreed or it is hoped to that through consensus and through public engagement and through continuous engagement that the presidency will come to the south. And if it comes to the south, there are three zones in the south. The three zones will still slug it out. And I think our chances are far better in the PDP. I'm saying this, I know I am a partisan person, but looking at it from a dispassionate view, you also see that look at PDP, look at ABC. Who would say that even the the 16 years of Afghan government hasn't, do, or I mean, uh, hasn't that done so much for the state because they have been here 15 years. So, and then some people will tell you, no, okay, we, we things are great, but some will tell you, you are saying they need to realign with the center. That's what you're you you saying now. Well, if Afghan has provided all the questions, all the answers to our questions on the mouth of India number, mm -hmm. this election will be so easy for them to win. But because at some point they derailed, at some point they missed it, at some point Yehembosyozubulopo Road was left undone, at some point all the routes, almost all the routes in the Anambra State were left undone, that moving from point A to point B became the most mm -hmm. impossible. Because unknown governments were left to roam freely, and the people who are on the saddle, and because these are political issues, uh, if we had leadership in Anambra State, it shouldn't have escalated to gun violence. Uh, Okay, but then Afghan will tell you that PDP have been there before now, and then if they had done well, Afghan wouldn't have come. But then for the fact that PDP did not do well, the Afghan came and they say that they have left some tangible and legacy projects. If that is their argument, well, that's, that's their argument. If that is their argument, my answer is because they are not doing well, people might consider PDP, and I'm hoping that they will consider PDP in 20 come November 6. Okay. All right, let's uh, take this message from PDP. When we come back, uh, we're going to just uh, take one or two calls and then you wrap up, and then ooh, that will be that. Ooh, that will be it for us this morning. Let's really take this message. We'll be right back. <laughs> In five minutes, we mess them all. Valentine is the goal. Azuka and then more. We are the best choice for governor. Vote Valentine is the goal for governor. 
All right, that's just a message from a uh, PDP campaign organization because uh, they don't want to uh, really on the see this very morning. That's the message, and then let's see if we can just take one. I don't know if you have exhausted the questions there, you've exhausted them, right? Yes, take I believe it. I've done. Okay, that. let's we take one more message or question. We come back and then you wrap up. Good morning, you're welcome. Good morning, you're welcome. Good morning. You're welcome. All right, I think you are, you have to pay us if you want to campaign for Abga. You have to come here. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. But that's your thought. If you want to campaign for Abga, please come and pay us. <laughs> All right, good morning. You're welcome. It's good to have you. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's good to have you. He's the one that you're welcome. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's uh, have your uh, pattern works because if just taking them, you yeah, react to the first caller who had said that Abka has done well, that Abka has brought tranquility, peace, the polity has done so much for the state. Uh, you react to that and then also react to what the last caller said so that we can really end. It's good that almost seven years after his, uh, he has left office, people keep preferring to what Governor Pitobi did while he was the governor of Anambra State and claiming that that Pitobi has moved on from Abga and he is now a member of the PDP. And those people that used to be the smoking guns in the PDP, look at where they are today, almost nowhere in the PDP. So what you have is a new PDP. And what you have in Abga is that those who formed and understood what the party stands for, and those who made the party thick, and those who brought good governance using the vehicle of that party have left the party. What you now have seems to be a carcass of a dead hen, or is it a dead cock? And then you have an, a party of people who don't care about the governed. Party who says that just 15 people died, that it's just 15 people. Party that allowed our roads. By the way, Anambra used to have the best network of roads. This same party has allowed it to deteriorate to the point that going from Onicha to Obusi to uh, uh, even the express, what can you, you see the problems are enormous. This party has failed us. In their stead, another will be elected. And that another is becoming, looking like seriously becoming the PDP. 
because PDP offers in the Anambra a credible alternative to the madness that is going on in the state today. PDP offers in the Anambra a credible platform. When you look at the platform, but beyond the platform, look at the candidate. The candidate is eminently qualified. He has oil on his head. He is very uh, uh, down to earth, and he's willing to engage every Anambra to see how Anambra will chawapu. His core message is Anambra chawapu. And I will ask your listeners, Obu Anambra chawapu on a faga like you. All right, thank you so much, Azumar. You have been very, very quite, uh, you know, how to really relax some of the things uh, Valentine's Day will, you said we'll be doing for the state. But then they say how it goes. We wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Christian Chema, a member of Publicity Committee, Valentine's Day to Azumar Campaign Organization. Thank you so much for your time. And then we promise you we'll be having many people from PDP that will be coming from time to time to talk to us about what they know and what they say in Valentine Ozibo and what they also say in PDP. They'll be speaking to us from time to time. So expect that. There will be arrangement. Of course, there is arrangement already in place for that. So expect more of this. Thank you so much, Jim, for your time. Thank you so much, everyone, for being part of this very program. Let's take a moment. When we come back, we are going to do the final wrap-up for the program. Just let's take a moment. We'll be right back. Yeah.